less. In this video, we want to describe one of the methods used to measure the speed of sound in air. For this, we need the following equipments. First, we need a function generator. The function generator can produce different types and frequencies of electric signals. In this method, we will use a generator that produces a sinusoidal signal. We also need a loudspeaker. The loudspeaker converts the electric signal into sound waves. We need two microphones. The microphone is a device that converts sound wave into an electric signal that we can study. The oscilloscope is a device used to measure and display the voltage of an electric signal. For displaying the voltage, the oscilloscope has a screen. It also has two entries, channel 1 and channel 2, for measuring two voltages at the same time. You can see each voltage alone, or you can see them together in the same screen in order to compare between them, like we will do in this method. We begin this method by connecting the loudspeaker to the function generator. The function generator produces an electric signal, sinusoidal electric signal, of frequency F. Then the loudspeaker converts this electric signal into sound waves of the same frequency F. The sound waves, the waves then travel through air until reaching the two microphones. The two microphones are put side by side in order to capture the sound waves produced by the loudspeaker at the same instant. Then the two microphones convert the sound waves of frequency F into electric signal of the same frequency F. We want to measure and study these two electric signals produced by the two microphones, so we connect the two microphones to the two channels of the oscilloscope. We observe that the two signals are confounded. Why is that? Because the two microphones are at the same distance from the loudspeaker. It means that they capture the sound wave at the same instant, so the two waveforms are confounded. In order to measure the speed of sound in air, we need to move one of the two microphones away from the loudspeaker. Before moving the microphone, let's call this microphone M1 and this microphone M2. Before moving the microphone M2 away from the loudspeaker, the two waveforms are confounded. It means that they are above each other and they are also in phase. It means that they reach their highest point and lowest point at the same instant. As we remove the microphone M2 away from the loudspeaker, we will observe two things on the screen of the oscilloscope. First, as we move this microphone, the two waveforms are no more confounded. Okay, and they are not in phase. We will continue moving the microphone until they become in phase again for the first time. Not only this, but also, as we move the microphone M2, we will observe another thing on the screen of the oscilloscope. The electric signal of the uh, microphone M2 will decrease in amplitude. Because the microphone M2 is now further away from the loudspeaker, so the intensity of the sound wave decreases. This is what happens when we move the microphone M2 away from the loudspeaker. So the two waveforms are in phase again for the first time, and the electric signal produced by the microphone M2 decreases in amplitude. But how can this help us to find the speed of sound in air? As we move the microphone M2 distance D away from its initial position, the waveform traveled one cycle, because the two waves become in phase again for the first time. It means that the distance d that the microphone M2 moved is equal to the wavelength lambda. Where lambda is the distance traveled by wave during one cycle. Keep in mind that the oscilloscope doesn't give you the value of the wavelength lambda. Instead, it gives you the value of the period t. Where the period t is the time needed by the wave to cover one cycle. So t is from here to here. And we can measure it by using the oscilloscope. After knowing that d is equal to lambda, we can use the formula v equal lambda f. Where v is the speed of sound in meters per second, lambda is the wavelength in meters, and f is the frequency of sound in hertz.
we can find the frequency either from the function generator or we can calculate the period t as we said from the oscilloscope and then use the formula f equal 1 over t to find the frequency of sound. After saying all that, let's take some real values. If the frequency of sound is given to be 1000 hertz and the distance between the two microphones is 33 centimeters, then how can we find the speed of sound in air? The first thing that we should do is to relate the distance d to the wavelength lambda. So as we said that d is equal to lambda, because the two waveforms were confounded and then they become in phase again for the first time when microphone M2 was moved distance D away. So D equals lambda equals 33 centimeters. It's more convenient to express the wavelength in meters, so we convert it. Now we use the formula V equal lambda F. Inserting the values of lambda and f, we get the speed of sound in air. So the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second. In this video, we use the formula v equal lambda f to calculate the speed of sound in air. This is everything for now.